In this clip, we are walking through the forward crew compartment of a World War II era restored B-29 bomber. The pilot station is here and the navigator sits in this chair. The rack behind the navigator mounts the APN-4 Loran indicator unit. The navigator uses this instrument to get a fix on the bomber's position relative to the Earth. The intent of this video is to review characteristics, usage, effectiveness, and the impact the World War II Loran navigation system had on the war effort. Enlisting the top three new weapons and systems the U.S. can now use to attack German U-boats, the Secretary of War wrote the President in this letter dated March 1943 that Loran navigation, mad retro bombing, and the FIDO homing torpedo as the items most promising. We covered mad retro bombing and FIDO homing torpedoes in these channel's videos. This page lists five of the top ten scientific advancements at the end of World War II in order. The atomic bomb, discovery of new elements and breeding of plutonium, antibiotics, proximity fuses, and Loran navigation. This page introduces Loran navigation principles and the advantages from an October 1944 Chief of Naval Operations document titled CIC. A ship or aircraft can establish their position by Loran navigation without transmitting any radio or radar signals. A trained navigator can obtain his position in a matter of minutes. Loran is short for long-range navigation. Two stations are sending out different coded short pulsed radio signals here and here at the same time. Both signals travel at at the speed of light. A line through these transmission stations is the baseline, and the line bisecting these stations is the center line. Any receiver along the center line will receive both signals without any time delay differential, since the distance to either signal source is the same. The receiver knows he must be somewhere on the line. The receiver unit does not direction find to the signal source, it only measures the time signal differential, if any. However, if the ship or plane is located here, there will be a time differential between the stations as the signal pulse from this station arrives after this station. The plane only knows his position will be along this hyperbolic line known as the Loran line of position. This diagram from a 1945 Naval Aviation Bulletin describes getting a position fix from two Loran lines of position. To get a position fix, three stations are needed. A master station is located here at point P, and two slave stations are located here at points Q and R. The solid parabolic lines coded as 2L6 define the Loran lines of positions for stations P and R. The number represents the timeline designations for stations P and R in units of microseconds. For example, 2500 microseconds equates to 0 0.0025 seconds. The process is repeated for stations P and Q. The Loran indicator reading for stations P and Q is 3000 microseconds. He now knows he lies along this position line. He just intersects the lines of positions from both readings on the Loran map to get his position fix at point X. Let's watch a video describing this concept. There are a pair here, for example. One is known as the master station. The other is the slave. For a moment. Consider these two stations operating as a synchronous pair, simultaneously emitting short pulses of radio energy. Leaving both shore stations simultaneously, a pair of pulses travel out into space, in all directions, at a constant speed, roughly 186,000 miles per second, or the speed of light. Plus, the pulse from the closer station will reach the ship an instant before the pulse from the other station. The Loran ship board gear measures this difference in time of arrival in millionth of a second, or microseconds. It simply determines how much longer one pulse takes to reach the ship than the other pulse. Now, this same time interval will be observed at many points within the range of the two shore stations. And when connected, these points form a hyperbola, known as the Loran line of position. To aid the navigator in obtaining a fix, specially prepared Loran tables and charts contain accurately plotted lines of position on the various time differences encountered in a particular area. Having one line of position, we then obtain readings from another pair of stations. An accurate fix is established at the intersection of the two lines of position. 
The advantages of the system include accurate position fixes for range up to 700 miles during the day and 1400 miles at night. Accuracy is comparable to celestial navigation. It is not affected by weather except heavy lightning. The plane's Loran receiver does not transmit a signal, so no signal for the enemy to track. A skilled operator can get an accurate position fix in a couple of minutes. The signals are coded. The enemy cannot use the system, even if it has a plane's Loran receiver. The system does not rely on the plane's compass, radio, or radar, only the Loran receiver. Since the Loran only measures the signal time differential, not the direction of the signal, the plane's Loran receiver antenna can be a simple straight wire. Expanding on some key system points from this 1946 Navy tactical use of radar document, a celestial navigation position fix takes around 20 to 25 minutes. The short time in which the Loran system needs to get a bomber's position fix is one of its most valuable characteristics. A B-29 navigator will use the plane's astro compass located here in the astrodome when navigating by celestial observations. A bomber can use the Loran for homing to any position within the Loran coverage zone. The plane is not restricted to homing in on a transmitting station like when using a radio direction finding system. This image shows the RDF homing antenna on a P-38. The B-29 RDF antenna is located inside this football-shaped fairing on the fuselage crown. This page shows the Knight Lorand zones of coverage as of August 15, 1945. Japan is here and is well covered. By the end of the war, over 70 Lorand stations were operational, providing coverage for one-third of the Earth's surface. As discussed in this 1980 Air Force Systems Command document titled Lorand Navigation System. It takes around 25 Navy or Coast Guard personnel to operate each Loran transmitting station as discussed in this 1945 Loran End of War Summary Document. A typical Loran transmitting station. Bomber navigators can be fully trained in Loran usage in around 20 hours. This page from a 1945 Army Air Forces document titled Graphic Survey of Radio and Radar Equipment outlines characteristics and features of the APN-4 Loran system. Loran maps will be provided to navigators like in this image. The navigator will interpolate between the station's line of positions if the time differentials do not fall directly on the map's line of position hyperbolic curves as seen in this portion of the map. The unit consumes 260 watts of power with a four band frequency ranging from 1.7 to 2.0 megacycles. The Loran radio receiver is here and indicator here. The navigator will get the signal's time differential by reading off of the indicator's 5 inch CRT scope. The system weight equates to 75 pounds. This image shows a processing of the station's master and slave pulse signals by the plane's Loran system from a 1949 electronic navigational aids document. The Loran master and slave signals as transmitted. The signals as received by the plane's Loran's unit and navigator. The scope view after the signal processing from the navigator. The signal's time differential is found here. The upgraded APN-9 Loran system bombers adopted is shown on this page. The weight was reduced to 40 pounds. This unit replaces the older APN-4 unit. The receiver and indicator are combined into a single unit. The unit consumes 190 watts of power. The CRT screen is only 3 inches in diameter with an added magnifier here. This image shows the APN-9 indicator's face. The identification and function of the unit's adjustments, knobs, and switches from an APN-9 1944 operations instructions document. This image shows the older APN-4 unit mounted in a bomber. This chart from a 1949 B-17G characteristics document lists the Loran system as the APN-9 unit. This page shows the B-24 ferrets trailing wire antenna supporting the APN-4 Loran system. Item 5 is here. The trailing wire antenna is located here from a PB4Y-2 maintenance manual. The weighted trailing wire antenna location on a B-17 bomber. The antenna is spooled out on a wire with a weight attached at the wire's end. Components of the system from Hangar13.org. The antenna will spool out 250 feet from a B-29 operations manual. The Douglas Sky Raider with the APN-4 Loran system listed as installed. The B-29's Loran system is listed as either the APN-4 or dash 9. 
The U.S. operated 42,780 APN-4 units and 7,210-9 units from 1943 to 1945, as seen in this 1952 U.S. Army Statistics Procurement Document. These items were sold after the war for a low price of $88.50, as seen in this 1967 Surplus Radio Equipment Supply Catalog. Additional characteristics of the various Loran receivers are listed in this table. The APN-4 unit has 42 vacuum tubes, while the APN-9 has 35 tubes, from a 1948 Loran summary document. This image shows the vacuum tube locations on the APN-9 unit. The Loran signal can travel farther when it is reflected off of the Earth's curved E or F layer from this 1946 Loran document. The signal is reflected off of these boundaries at night, giving around twice the signal reception range at night than during the day. The accuracy of the bomber's position is around 1% of the distance to the Loran station. If the bomber is 1,000 miles from the station, the plane's fixed position will be within about 10 miles from its true position. The benefits in using Loran in bombing missions is discussed on this page. Loran simplifies navigation during the sortie. It will help reestablish the plane's position after flak avoiding evasive action used to route around known flak positions, not affected by low visibility conditions, can be used to estimate the ground speed and ETA to target. Its real benefit is in long-range navigation. Over terrain without features, the bomber's course can be accurately maintained. Wind drift can be found quickly. Course can be set to any point within the Loran coverage area. Flight planning is not dependent on weather expected. Loran navigation will also have value in sea sweeps, looking for and reporting the location of enemy contacts and in search and rescue missions by quickly locating down flyers. The value of Loran was mostly seen in the B-29 strategic bombing campaign over Japan by the 21st Bomber Command. The bombers were deployed from the Marianas Islands located here on this map. The route to Japan is around 1,500 miles, mostly over open water. The average B-29 mission duration is around 14 and a half hours, as seen in this table from a 1940. 45 20th Air Force Command and Staff Reference Book. The newer, lightweight, APN-9 retrofit priority list is shown on this page from a January 1945 20th Air Force's weekly newsletter. The priority ranking order includes B-29s, B-24s, B-17s, B-25s, and A-26s. This page from an August 1945 21st Bomber Command Tactical Mission Report outlines Loran mission statistics. Bomber routes are shown on this map. Of the 271 B-29s airborne, 4,514 Loran position fixes were obtained, 23 systems malfunctioned. The Loran's usable maximum distance equated to 1,450 nautical miles when the night signal was collected with the trailing wire antenna and 1,425 nautical miles from the plane's fixed antenna. No jamming was reported. Loran was only used for navigation, not bombing. This page from extracted 21st Bomber Command B-29 mission snippets regarding bomber navigation notes. Significant annotations include, all navigators use both Celestial and Loran aids. Loran was used to compensate for strong winds. Range was predictable. Cloud cover required Loran navigation. Clouds forced navigators to use Loran exclusively. The system was 90% functional. Loran placed the bombers within 10 miles of the Japanese coastline. Routing was easy due to Loran. Long-range navigation was by Celestial and Loran aides. A warning on Loran usage is described on this page from a February 1945 Navy CIC document. Loran usage has been simple and accurate. Other navigation methods may seem difficult or even obsolete. Navigators should retain their skill sets for these other navigation methods. Loran sets may become inoperative during a mission or the plane may fly into a zone without Loran signal coverage. Loran is a navigational tool, not a navigator. Navigation and blind bombing systems adopted in Europe used either the British G system or the U.S. Loran SS system, as discussed in this 1946 radar systems document. G is a hyperbolic system like Loran. Loran SS is a skyway synchronized. This map shows the location of the Loran master and slave stations. G was limited in range to around 350 miles and accuracy was around 2 to 3 miles. The RAF used Loran SS for target sighting in their long-range bombing missions. 800 aircraft were fitted with these systems. 
An aircraft fitted with both G and Loran G was preferred if within the G station coverage zones due to its ease of use. Nighttime RAF mosquito raids to Berlin were navigated and bombing was conducted with SS Loran. This chart from a 1945 8th Air Force's tactical development document shows a percentage of bombing missions where target sighting was by visual, H2X radar, G, or micro H. By December 1944, G was a dominant target sighting system. By July 1945, the U.S. was fully committed to the Loran navigation and recommended that all U.S. planes swap out their G navigation equipment for Loran systems. As discussed in this headquarters, U.S. Strategic Air Forces in Europe memo, were you aware of the significance of Loran navigation in World War II? If you found this World War II Loran navigation system usage deep dive review interesting and informative, Please consider supporting the channel by liking, commenting, and or subscribing to World War II U.S. Bombers.